by the 1980s, the record companies were marketing fusion. And then they started marketing smooth jazz, funky jazz. And these, because it was a marketing device, like hamburgers, you know, you want a bacon burger, you want a double cheeseburger, uh, and it became like this. And, <clears throat> and the music uh, was evolving with society. And society, if you recall, there was a narcissism that, that entered society in the 80s. Um, Saturday Night Fever, you know, you know, hey. Uh, this whole, you know, look, the look about things, and the look almost became more important than the content, um, because it, to a certain degree that's still true today. Now, don't, don't misunderstand me, there's some wonderful musicians playing great music out there, but the, the, I think the impact of the smooth jazz was with society, which, which they wanted to listen to jazz, but not be too disturbed by it. And, and to the point where maybe they could have a conversation over it, you know, so, so play, but not too uh, aggressive, they would call it, not aggressive at all. Um, but uh, not too wild, not too far out, let's keep it, you know. And the record companies recognized this, and they, they cultivated, or how should I say, encouraged the musicians to, to adopt a s certain uh, conservatism. And as a result, the music became much more cliched, um, the drummers were just like doing a simple two and a four backbeat, you know, I mean, what is that? I mean, the drummer is the heartbeat of the band. He has to be free, He's, you know, and, if, and, and, and we all go with the drummer. If the drummer's free, then we can be free also. But just to play over two and a four, and this, this is what it became with this kind of smooth, funky jazz, and the soloists, as a result of the drummer being almost like a drum machine, became automatically more conservative because what can you do it against the two and a four? You know, I mean, hello, where's where's the blood? Where's where's the muscle? Where are the tripes? Where is you know where's the passion? It's gone. It's all gone. And so. And so, and, and it's been evolving like this for quite, quite a number of years, as you must know, you know. And so Larry, of course, became uh, too far out for the record companies, basically, you know, like Cecil Taylor. And, uh, but, you know, these people, Pharaoh Sanders, although Pharaoh, I have to say, Pharaoh Sanders, whom I adore absolutely, and, and, the, and the way he played, so beautiful, uh, became, it went back in a way to a more conservative way of playing standards. And I used to go to the Vanguard to see him play standards, and it was, and it was marvelous. Look at Archie Shepp. Remember Archie Shepp with Roswell Rudd and Beaver Harris? I'm into the 1960s. Was this, this was wonderful, liberating music, you know, when Archie started playing Charlie Parker tunes, you know, I mean, which is, which is beautiful, but um, I know you have to make some steps backwards to go forwards, but, but uh, if, the, if, for me, the music was being uh, affected and influenced by the way society was evolving as a society. And, and you see it today, and you, and you go in a bistro, you go into a restaurant, and you'll hear some smooth jazz, and people, you know, it's like, uh, yeah, it's cool, yeah, it's okay, you know, and you talk over it, and that's, and they call it jazz. They call Kenny G jazz. I mean, <laughs> this is something else, isn't it?